Um, Stephen, come on, you're a lefty. Yeah. You can defend well, look, A couple of things. You, you started off with uh, George Orwell, and one of his famous essays, he's on a bus in Letchworth going to the Newtown, and he sees a, a group of men wearing shorts, and he, dis he immediately identifies them as uh, cooperators and, and socialists, but then, of course, maybe from an old Etonian perspective. But don't forget, his first book, Burmese Days, actually one of the most potent and, and poignant sections of that describes a hanging, um, which he was a member of the Burma Imperial Police there. And he actually says, you know, in, in this story, why can't our rules apply to our subjects as, as they were at the time. So I think Orwell, you know, despite the, the comment you made, which is absolutely accurate, was actually a believer in human rights. But uh, I think, let's get a couple of things straight. First of all, Amnesty have made fools of themselves by using the word bulldozing. It's ridiculous. I would say that we need to defend human rights. I think any civilised country should have a codification, a basic layer of human rights that apply to all of us. The problem is interpretation, and the extension, the sort of kind of limitless extension. I'm all in favour of human rights, but I'm not a huge supporter of amnesty. At the perhaps high point of liberal England, weren't our human rights best defended by the House of Commons that really believed in them? And you see that in the reluctance. Nobody to talked about human rights, no, Jacob. No. Your history, forgive me, was completely phony. <laughs> you were not talking about human rights. You were talking about political rights. You were talking about the universal rights under common law, life liberty, property, freedom of speech, freedom of the person. What has happened is that those notions have been perverted and polluted. The human rights we have now tend to be directed against the individual or against the majority of individuals rather than defending the individual against the state. This is the problem that's happened with the takeover of the United Nations after 1945, particularly by the Soviet Union and its satellites. It deliberately used... This is, and you actually made a good point. When you good say, Lord, no, 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 no. Yeah, this is really... This is yeah, actually... Yeah, because, can we be yeah, serious? Because yeah, it really yeah, is serious. Yeah. What has gone wrong is that we've replaced those universal rights, life, mm -hmm. liberty and property, with highly specific mm -hmm. rights, the, the rights of gays, mm -hmm. the rights of women in certain circumstances, a right to abortion, a right to food. Now, all of these very peculiar rights actually are specific to individuals. They're not general. And moreover, the right of a woman and the right of a trans, as we are discovering, are very likely to clash with each other. And the only way those clashes can be arbitrated is by constant judicial intervention. So instead of universal mm. rights, we've replaced sectional rights. In, in uh, place of rights that unite us, we've introduced rights that divide and us. And we're seeing this at the moment totally. with the right to privacy which is fundamentally undermining the right to freedom of speech. And we see this being argued out in the courts actually yeah, today, today, at yeah. the moment. It, I mean, Isaiah Berlin um, put it very, very powerfully when he said, freedom for the wolf does not always mean freedom for the lamb. Uh, and I think that's the point you then... I, actually, I mean, I, I know I'm going to get sacked for this, but I, I think Dr Stark has made a very important point about the sort of... the, the, the dharma, the, you know, the idea of sort of uh, universal basic rights, of, you know, just basically you don't kill each other and, and you, you take it yeah, from that. They're, they're, yeah. not, they're not they're, rights. I mean, I mean, yeah. Again, it, that, it, it really, civilization. It, you know, it's it. really yeah, important yeah, yeah, yeah. that we, you know, we go back to Locke. The key figure in this, if you like, is is Locke and those three basic liberties of life, liberty, and property. Everything else is added on to those, yeah. and they are universal and they define you and your membership of the political community. You're, they're not group rights. It's group rights that are catastrophic and unfortunate, and they're also the rights of members of the political community. They're not immigrant rights. Yeah. And, and amnesty has now become a believer in the rights of minorities against the majority. Yeah. Well, amnesty is in huge problem at the moment because of the issue on abortion, which has cost yeah. them a huge... But if you actually look at the American Constitution, you know, back in whenever, 1776, they took Tom Paine, the, the rights of man, and they enshrined it. No, they don't. You're quite right. No, 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 Stephen, I was going on Stephen, to say that that oh, is a basic no, right, no, Stephen, a Stephen, basic no, no, life, no, liberty no, and the pursuit no, of no, happiness. No, 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 that's exactly what does... Sorry, Madison uh, took from Paine. It's not pain, it's lock. And can we can we be really clear? The American Bill of Rights is the first cousin of the English yes, Bill of Rights. Yeah. It's essentially rights at common law. Yeah. It is 
not what's been built the, onto it after yeah. the 1960s. No, the, 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 the right, the the right to bear yeah. arms yeah. is a direct crib well, we, from yeah. our Bill of Rights, except mm. ours is for the maintenance of a Protestant militia, mm. and theirs is for the maintenance of a militia. Yeah. Mm. Um, fortunately, we no longer need a Oddly Protestant enough, the militia. The Indian constitution, um, written by Ambedkar, is exactly word for word. Uh, the Republic of India is a secular socialist state dedicated to life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. And that didn't last. Well, it left out property. The yes. re and this, again, I'm sorry, as a socialist, you won't understand this. But property, but property is the property is an right. utterly fundamental yes. right. And the fact mm. that we've diminished this, that we attack it, that you know, our taxation regime makes a mockery of the notion of property rights, is one of the reasons that things have gone so badly and so radically wrong. Yes, that pro um, property is the fundamental underpinning of all the rest of the Constitution. If you don't have property rights, uh, then none of your other rights end up lasting. Well, I don't know. You, you, can, you can have a property, if, if you're gonna, and if you're going to be dragged out and executed at the whim of some despot, you know, you don't have rights. You could have a brilliant house, but then no head. But if he takes your head off, he's taking your property, so you've lost your property rights. But thank you okay. to my <laughs> black panel.